Okay. Good evening. Welcome to the League of Women Voters of Curry County's Special Districts Candidate Forum. This is the second of three scheduled forums, and we have candidates for South Coast ESD, Southwestern Oregon Community College, which are regional positions, and for the Port of Port Orford Port Commission for voters in that district. These forums will be recorded and available on uh, lwvcurry.org and other social media. I am Georgia Nallen, tonight's moderator. I'd like to introduce our voter service co-chairs, Charlie Alexander and Mary Jane LaBelle. Mary Jane is also our league president. She will be co-hosting this Zoom along with Dennis Triglia, league and voter service committee member. Dennis will also be tracking tonight's questions and answers. Charlie is our timer. Candidates tonight are running for the South Coast ESD Board of Directors, position number seven, the Southwestern Oregon Community College or SOC Board of Education, position number seven, and the Port Orford Port Commission, positions number two and three. All candidates running for these contested positions have been invited to this forum. Let me begin with the League of Women Voters mission statement. The League of Women Voters, a nonpartisan political organization, encourages informed and active participation in government, works to increase understanding of major public policy issues, and influences public policy through education and advocacy. The League does not support or oppose candidates running for elected office. Any voting person can be a member of the League of Women Voters. We have both men and women members invite you to join. So here are the ground rules for tonight's virtual forum. Unless you are speaking, please stay on mute. Candidates will be asked to speak in rotating order. Each candidate will be given three minutes for their opening statement. Once that portion is completed, we will go to the questions and answer section of the forum. Questions have been collected from the public and league members prior to the forum. You will have one and a half minutes to, uh, to respond. Our timer, Charlie, will cue Mary Jane to put up the 30 second sign on the screen when you have 30 seconds left. When your time is up, a stop card will come on the screen. Can you all see this? Okay. I will now introduce the candidates. As previously mentioned, all contested candidates were invited to this forum. Ron Johnson, who is running for both the South Coast ESD board and the SOC board positions number seven, has not responded, nor has Jacqueline Aiello, candidate for Port Orford Port Commission position number two. Lori Crosby, candidate for Port Orford Port Commission position number three has declined. So we have a candidate for the South Coast ESD board, Marie Simons. And Marie, I'm gonna have you come on for three minutes and thank you. Great. Well, first I'll say thank you, Georgia. Thank you, Mary Jane. And thank you to all of the members of the League of Women Voters for hosting this forum tonight. Appreciate the opportunity to be able to talk a little bit about who I am and why I am running for the South Coast Education Service District position number seven. Just to double check, Georgia, you can hear me okay? Great. Yes, thanks. you're fine. So again, uh, my name is Marie Simons and I am running for the South Coast Education Service District position number seven. I am the parent of two students in our South Coast school districts. I am a community volunteer and I currently serve on the board of the South Coast ESD. Serving students on the South Coast in the way they need is my goal in running for the South Coast ESD board. The South Coast DSD is a high functioning organization and I've had the privilege of seeing this firsthand throughout the past year. I am extremely dedicated to serving our South Coast students. In addition to the ESD board, 
I currently serve and am running for re-election to the Bandon School District Board. I also serve on the South Coast Regional Early Learning Hub and have helped to initiate a parent-teacher organization in Bandon, as well as a child care center that opened a little over a year ago in Bandon. I'm also a volunteer coach. I've coached numerous soccer, golf, and basketball teams. I am truly dedicated to our youth on the South Coast. A little more about me. About 17 years ago, my husband and I moved to the South Coast. When we arrived, I was drawn to working in education and started working for Southwestern Oregon Community College in the foundation office where I worked for over six years, half of those as executive director, working on both scholarships for students and on fundraising for the Curry County Southwestern Oregon Community College campus, which we know is up and running today. Once our second son was born, I took a few years off and stayed home to raise our children, our oldest 13 and our youngest now 11. For the past nine years, I've worked at Wild Rivers Coast Alliance, where I now serve as the executive director. Wild Rivers Coast Alliance is a grant-making department of Bandon Dunes Golf Resort and is granted over $5 million to support local organizations working towards supporting and benefiting the South Coast region. In both my professional capacity as well as personally, I serve on many boards and committees, all with the intention of, of assisting those organizations reach their goals and best serve the people of the South Coast. I will bring that same passion, dedication, and experience to the South Coast Education Service District for the next four years, and hope to do so with your vote on May 18th. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marie. And now we have the candidate for the Southwestern Oregon Community College Board, Maria Suda. I'm excited about the possibility of serving our community as a Southwestern Oregon Community College board member. It was a community college that opened my career pathway of becoming a lifelong educator. I bring a strong background in education. I was a bilingual school teacher for the first half of my career. I then taught in the teacher credential programs at California State University Chico for the concluding years of my career. During my tenure at Chico State, I was actively involved in leadership roles. I served on the Academic Senate for six years, which acts as a shared governance body for the university. My last year there, I served as co-chair for Education Policies and Programs Committee. I also served on the Governance Council for College of Communication and Education, in which we sought ways to further support our students' success in completing their degrees. I believe that these experiences from the kind of work I would be expected to support as a SWAC board member. I retired from Chico State in 2014 and we began our transition to Brookings, Oregon. Since retiring, I have supported local community endeavors, serving on the boards of the Brookings, Oregon Monarch Advocates and Azalea Park Foundation. I hold as a value that I should be an active member of my community and give back. I want to pay all that forward and open pathways for our tri-counties, Coos, Curry, Douglas, youth and residents. I want to contribute to and build on the strengths of our Southwestern Oregon Community College. Community colleges provide affordable pathways to careers for our youth right out of high school or those of us who want to make a career change later on. Our campuses offer over 70 programs for our students, a wide array of degrees and certificates, providing meaningful opportunities, associate transfer degrees, associate applied science degrees, and several one and two year certificate pathways. It is my humble opinion that the community at large doesn't truly realize everything that SWAC has to offer. I want to be that conduit of information. I see myself as an active listener to our community members, SWAC leadership, faculty, staff, and students. I would also want to learn all the programs in more depth so that I could responsibly serve in this capacity as a board member. As a board member, I would see myself as an active participant in shared governance as I outreach to our communities at large. I would help get the word out by attending local groups and campus events to share everything our joint campuses have to offer and to listen to voices in our community in terms of how else we might further envision our collective future. In closing, I would like to say that if you put your faith in me, I will serve you to the best of my capacity. 
I strongly believe in the power of community colleges to uplive lives to build for a better future. This was my own personal story, and I want to see that story replicated across our counties. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Now, uh, the candidate for Port Orford Port Commission position number two, Brett Webb. You have three minutes, Brett. Thanks, Georgia. Um, and thanks to the viewers uh, for investing in, in being an informed voter. I think it's important to do that. Um, so my name is Brett Webb. I am currently uh, at the end of my third term here at the Port of Port Orford and uh, third consecutive term. And I have served several terms as the chairman of the board. And I've learned a lot of those, a lot of, of things in those 12 years that, uh, that are important uh, for a board and for a manager to know. I'm the father of five and a grandfather of five. And I've commercially fished for 30 years and am the founder of a multi-generational fishing family. The port's success has a direct impact on my investment and my family's future. I recently served as a council president during my time on the city council in Port Orford. I volunteer in several capacities. Some of my favorites are uh, with ODFW. Uh, I'm an advisor to the commercial near shore fishery board where sustainability is critical to Port Orford's success. I'm especially proud of my work with the Commercial Permit Review Board, where we can and have overruled an Oregon law judge. And on occasion, uh, I've had to vote to strip permits, fishing permits from even friends. Uh, resource managers and my colleagues trust my opinion. If I'm reelected, the port could have a board with 16 years combined experience. If I am not, it is possible to see that combined number fall to four, four years or 16 years. We do have brilliant management and new commissioners, but there's things that they simply cannot and do not know. Continuity at this point in time is critical as we're moving forward with a large redevelopment project that will move us into the future. We do not, we cannot stall out now and we cannot redirect. Um, you know, I, I could probably go on and on, but um, that those are the, the bullet points that I'm, I feel support uh, my candidacy the most. And uh, that's all I have, thank you. Thank you, Brett. All right, so now the candidate for Port Orford Port Commission position number three, Richard Fox, and you have three minutes. You need to unmute yourself, Richard. <laughs> okay, that would help. Anyway, thank you, Georgia, and uh, thank you to uh, the rest of you for putting this together for uh, for our citizens. I think it's a it's a, a great service, and uh, uh, thank you. So. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Richard Fox, and I'm running for a port commissioner seat number three. A uh, little bit about me: I've been married to my wife Bonnie for 35 years. We have two daughters, two grandchildren, and I retired to or we retired to Port Orford a year and a half ago. We've always been involved in giving back to our communities. Uh, myself and four others founded a youth soccer club 19 years ago, and today that club enjoys keeping 850 kids actively playing and off the streets. Uh, as a president of the Clayton Valley High School Booster Club, I helped raise a million and a quarter dollars to renovate the football, soccer, track, and field stadium, first high school in the district to do so. As one of eight members of the Concord Youth Sports Foundation, we raised over $4 million to build a youth sports complex, including baseball, soccer, and softball fields. Since moving to Port Orford, I have become very involved with the Common Good Food Bank here, and three months ago was asked to be on the board of directors. At the same time, my wife, Bonnie, 
became actively involved with the Friends of the Library and she continues to do so today. One of the main reasons for moving to Port Orford was being close to the ocean and everything associated with it. My passion is fishing and I can spend as, and I spend as much time as I can doing that. The greatest thing I love about this town is the port, the history, the culture, the generations of commercial fishing. The fact that we are the oldest port on the Oregon coast serves only to add to the uniqueness of, of our port. This past year has been very difficult for the port of Port Orford, both financially and all the businesses associated with the port. We must all work together to make sure that the potential redevelopment project moves forward and is ultimately successful. Our commercial fishermen and our tenants are the port's greatest assets and generate the most revenue. It's imperative that we are successful in getting a fresh seafood hub up and running that will allow our citizens to have access to fresh fish and seafood at reasonable prices. This will create additional revenue for the commercial fishermen. It will create new jobs for the citizens of Port Orford and potentially make our port a destination place for travelers all over the past 14 months. I've attended virtually every port commission and redevelopment meetings uh, over the last 14 months. I have found them to be educational, informational, and become very excited about the pros proposed redevelopment plans for the port. I'm excited about having the opportunity to run for port commissioner. I look forward to helping in any and every way possible with both passion and integrity and in bringing the project to a finished stage. I look forward to working as a team with fellow commissioners. I welcome the challenge of the redevelopment project. I welcome the challenge to a balanced budget. I welcome the challenge of being one of the successful overseers of the port. Thank I you, Richard. Your time is up. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and uh, present the questions that have been submitted for answers. And again, candidates, uh, you're gonna have one and a half minutes to respond. So the first question I'm gonna be asking is going to be for all the candidates. And I'll start with you, Marie Simons. And um, the question is, what do you see as the biggest challenges facing the organization that you're looking to serve on? And we'll start with you, Marie. Thanks so much, Georgia. Um, you know, I think education this past year, a number of challenges have emerged. We're talking about um, things like trauma-informed support for our students. We're talking about just getting our students back in classrooms, uh, finding ways, uh, creative ways to meet our students in a safe way. I think as we approach this next year, for students all across uh, the ESC that the ESC serves, which is all 10 school districts up and down the South Coast, um, you know, first and foremost, we wanna make sure that we are safe, both with our staff, um, as well as the students that we serve. And then also um, one of the ESD's primary roles is really to provide those support services um, that districts up and down the South Coast need through the local service plan. So I think the challenge is both addressing students where they're at, uh, with both the trauma-informed needs that we see and really providing those supports that will help the, our districts um, as we transition out of this pandemic um, into what looks to be more like a back to normal situation for our students. I think that will be, that will be our biggest challenge. Thank you. And for Maria Sudas. The question is, what do you see as the biggest challenges facing the organization that you are looking to serve on? I think for um, all of us in many ways, coming out of the pandemic is the biggest challenge. I know that community colleges, um, education systems as a whole have been hit hard uh, budget wise with um, loss of um, full-time equivalencies with a loss of student uh, enrollment. Uh, for our students, I think that the, uh, getting through this pandemic has been very hard on their social emotional learning. 
uh, and they're, they're um, being able to navigate uh, a system that they're not familiar with. I mean, we all know from being on Zoom as much as we are now that that was a whole system to learn. For students, it was a very isolating experience. They didn't have the support of their peers to uh, bounce ideas off like they do in a face-to-face -face system. And one of the strengths of a community college is are the, the close relationships that you develop with your professors that also is impact by distance learning. So I think uh, finding ways back to uh, being face-to-face -face is going to be very important uh, and uh, supporting all of us to be safe and be able to, um, to get back to one of the key beauties of, of community colleges. And that's that, that very close relationship that you have with each other, your counselors and your professors. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Richard Fox, uh, same question. What do you see as the biggest challenge for the Port, um, Port Orford Port Commission? Thank you, Georgia. Uh, well, as everybody is uh, alluding to, we are definitely coming out of this, uh, out of the pandemic. And the, the, court, the port has some unique uh, issues um, coming up. Uh, one is mainly the redevelopment project. Uh, I strongly uh, believe in this redevelopment project. I wanna do everything that we can to bring this to uh, a successful uh, uh, outcome. It is, uh, it's imperative for both the commercial fishermen and for the port itself and for all the businesses associated with the port that this redevelopment project uh, is successful. Uh, it will create uh, jobs for the city of Port Orford, for the citizens of Port Orford. It's going to increase revenues for the port. It's going to increase revenues for the commercial fishermen. Uh, it will op open up additional avenues for recreational uses at the port. And uh, the redevelopment is critical to the port's continuation and the port's success in the coming years. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Brett, the same question. Thanks. Um, I guess I would just sort of echo Rick. Um, we've been working on this redevelopment project for 10 years. Um, uh, our strategic business plan specifically directed us to create additional leasing space without which we face insolvency. It's not just simply about growth. It's about survival. We cannot survive without this building. Uh, with it comes, you know, all of the great things that, that Rick has mentioned. Um, it, it also uh, increases the Oregon State University uh, footprint. And in my opinion, that is a game changer for the community. That is probably our, our greatest brightest piece of future is the growth in that sector. Uh, it, it, the sky's the limit with education, um, you know, aquaculture, but, but again, I, I believe that I can just see that through. I, it needs to happen. This is, you know, every time a board is elected and there's new guys come in, the thing stalls. Everybody looks at what was done last year and they want to say, Hey, no, we want this over there. We can't do it. There's just no time. We are, as it is, we're running out of money and this thing needs to happen. So that's probably the, the, the biggest challenge is just being sure that we continue to get our ducks in a row. And we're attempting to do it without asking the taxpayers uh, for any additional money. So it's, thank you. Uh, thank uh, you. Okay, so um, the next question is going to be for the Port Orford Port Commission candidates. And Brett, I'm going to actually put you back on. And this is the next question for you. How do you plan to involve residents of the district in decision making? How will you keep them informed of district activities? Thank you uh, for the question. We, the, the board has recently uh, directed management to begin uh, just outreach through social media. We have a Facebook page. We have, you know, our meetings, we post them. 
I do most of my, you know, these conversations, they happen at the grocery store. Um, I'm approachable. Hey, Brett, what's going on down at the port? And it can take me two and a half hours to get a gallon of milk. So, uh, you know, being this close, tight-knit community and having been there for 12 years, um, people know, they call me, you know, that's, uh, I'm a familiar face. And I think if we continue on the course that we're on, I think that we have already increased that communication with the public and it's tough through the pandemic. It really is. Uh, I believe that when we do get back to in-person meetings, uh, you know, that may help, but we do have uh, outreach meetings where the community is invited to come in and give their their opinions on what they think where the you know what they think the port should look like what what uh their thoughts are we we have had some of those sit downs o over the the past several years i guess I, I think that we're pretty pretty active in that but, okay. thank you brett all right uh richard same question would you like me to repeat it Okay, I, I assume that's a yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. How do you plan to involve residents of the district in decision making, and how will you keep them informed of district activities? Thank you. Um, unlike uh, Brett, who has been around here for uh, for many many years, uh, I have not. Uh, I have only been here for about eighteen months, and. I became involved with the port uh, through their meetings. Um, that's how I learned about what was going on down there. That's how I uh, told myself I wanted to be involved um, down there. Um, the fact that I am out and about in the community, I, I see an awful lot of people on a weekly basis, uh, shopping locally, uh, working at the common good. Um, we, we take care of a lot of the things down there and, and uh, I have a chance to meet and chat with uh, a lot of people. Um, one of the things that uh, I've been going to encourage is that the public attend our, our meetings. Um, I'd like to see us uh, publish uh, a little more uh, assertively uh, when our meetings are going to be. Um, I love the fact that we have uh, outreach meetings and, and those have been uh, successful. And uh, I will make myself available at any time, uh, at any place. Uh, if anybody should uh, want the opportunity to have a commissioner speak at any uh, type of event that they might have. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, this next question is going to be for the SWAT candidate, Maria. And the question is, how will you work with faculty unions and college administration to assure stable funding and continued educational excellence in times of fluctuating enrollment? Yes, so um, part of my background uh, with the Academic Senate at uh, Chico State, I served as a lecturer at large. And so my role was very, and I also served on the educational um, uh, policies and procedures, which was very much uh, focused on sustainability for uh, enrollment. And I, do know that in terms of working with administration and unions, that was our role on the Academic Senate. We were a, a shared governance body that worked with the unions, we worked with the administration, we worked across faculty and staff to uh, be very much uh, solution oriented. And at the university, at, at community colleges and at four-year universities, having uh, full-time equivalencies is a driving force for programs, how things get funded, who stays uh, viable, who doesn't. And what that means, it's, it's literally students uh, in seats, right? So uh, programs that, um, that uh, are most successful have students in seats. And that's very much a, a would be a focus of mine to, to really uh, help build on the 1500 plus students we have now, because the more students we have in viable programs, the, uh, the, the more healthy the whole uh, college is. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Okay, Marie, now the question is for the ESD candidate. And the question is, 
Voters are often less familiar with the functions of the education service districts than they are with local school districts. What specifically motivated you to serve on the SCESD board? Thanks, Georgia. And I agree with you. I'm not sure that our citizenry is as um, knowledgeable about the programs that are provided um, by the ESD. And I would say probably our school districts as well, um, serving on the Bandon School Board uh, for three years now and one year as vice chair. Uh, I was less familiar with what the ESD does and more familiar now, but less familiar um, before. Um, I think it's in, incumbent upon our ESD staff and our board to continue to share the message that really, you know, in collaboration with the school districts, the ESD works to ensure that all students maximize their potential. Um, there's a lot that the ESD does in terms of providing um, special education services and really um, working with students who need that specialized individual attention um, in order to really maximize their potential. And the ESD has um, very competent staff, um, exceptional leadership that really works hand in glove with our local school districts to be able to provide our students with the services that they need to succeed. Um, continuing to share that message, I know our, um, our executive director serves on a number of different statewide initiatives um, and really working to bring that message home to the South Coast in terms of making sure we understand all the great work that the EFT is doing. Thank you. And actually, I'm going to have a follow up question for you as well, Marie. And that is the South Coast Education Service District 7 is centered in Coos Bay in Coos County. How will you work to ensure that students in Curry County will be able to benefit from programs developed and supported by the South Coast Education Service District? Well, it, it may be centered in uh, Coos Bay, but there is an office down in Gold Beach and um, the staff uh, transits between counties uh, very frequently. And if students need to be served, that's where the staff is serving the students. So, you know, there's um, certainly um, eyes wide open in terms of wanting to make sure that we serve all of the students of the district. Um, we serve from, uh, sometimes we'll, we serve up through Reedsport all the way down to Brookings. So, um, you know, just a real um, committed, very committed to wanting to make sure we serve all of the students um, in the district. Thank you. All right, and now I have another question for uh, Swak and Maria. The question is, what initiatives would you take or support to improve graduation and transfer rates for low-income students and students of color. Thank you. Um, so I, another um, experience that I've had is working with a project called the Teacher Diversity Project at Chico State. And that was serving first-generation college students. And the whole role of that uh, program was to um, provide stipends and learning experiences so that students brand new to the college experience would be able to be successful, uh, not only in really testing out their, their, in this case, wanting to be a teacher, but also earning stipends as they worked in the schools to learn more about teaching. And then um, also I've, I work now with a National Urban Alliance for Effective Education. That is a nonprofit that works nationally in uh, urban school districts across the whole United States. And we serve underserved populations. So we serve students who um, many are uh, living on, on, uh, in um, high poverty situations, high poverty schools. And so um, I would bring all those experiences to my role as a board member. And I also strongly believe that uh, we lift all ships. I would build on the scholarship programs that are already in place at uh, SWAP because I think they're very strong. And I would work closely with uh, both campuses to, uh, to keep an eye on, on our student success. Thank you, Maria. 
Okay, so this question now is going to be for the candidates for the Port Orford Port Commission. And the question is, and I'll start with you, Richard, is outline your plan to responsibly and efficiently use funds to maximize benefit for the most citizens and your plan to keep rates affordable while still providing necessary services. Well, I believe that the redevelopment project uh, is, is first and foremost, the most important thing. And it's going to be the commission's job to manage those funds properly, uh, efficiently, and put the money where uh, it is needed the most. Uh, part of that is, uh, is developing new space for uh, retail, developing new uh, space, additional space for uh, rental areas for uh, expanded uh, aquaculture, expanded uh, fish buying, and also for uh, the proposed seafood hub that's going to allow the citizens of Port Orford to uh, uh, purchase fresh fish and seafood, which they've never been able to do in the past. And, and I think that's uh, very, very important, especially keeping them at reasonable prices. Uh, it, it's, it's imperative uh, for the port's success that uh, additional revenues are, are made available to the port. And part of that, re most of all of the redevelopment is geared uh, towards that as well as modernizing the port. And I think that is uh, one of the most key elements of the redevelopment project. It's going to allow the port to continue to thrive and grow and meet the needs of the community. Thank you. Thank you. And Brett, the same question. Would you like me to go ahead and repeat that question for you? Or are you okay? All right. Uh, yeah, would you please? Yes. Outline your plan to responsibly and efficiently use funds to maximize benefit for the most citizens and your plan to keep rates affordable while still providing necessary services. Thank you. Um, well, my assumption is, is the funds uh, is taxpayer tax tax dollars, uh, I imagine. Um, the port operates on, uh, its budget is about one eighth taxpayer funded. And we are unique in the services that we offer to users. And we are in line with the cost of other ports on a monthly basis. Uh, for example, what does it cost for uh, a slip in Charleston? It's about the same as a slip in Port Orford. Um, the user needs to continue to pay his way. And I'm a user and I have voted many times to raise my own rates. And in fact, it was, uh, one of my projects that I moved forward, believe it or not, it was uh, just to get uh, the, the inflation, uh, you know, the CPI, the 3% annually. I mean, we hadn't raised the rates in 20 years and, uh, you know, the place is falling apart. So if you really love the port and you really depend on the port and you're, you're really a user, you want the thing to function. And if it costs you another 10 bucks, you pay another 10 bucks and uh, you suck it up and you pay. Everything's expensive. Maybe that's a bit, uh, you know, a blunt uh, take on it, but that's sort of my style. I believe that that's accurate. And, and I believe that uh, we are currently and, and always have been working within our budget. We have a balanced budget every year. We put, uh, uh, a substantial amount of money away for in our savings every year it's we are doing a very good job and will continue to do so uh, I don't see any big shift in, in uh, policy I could, I'll tell you that I just don't we're doing fine thank you for the question thank you okay so we're gonna go back to ESD and this question is for you Marie and the question is in your opinion, what are the one or two most important programs that currently are supported by South Coast ESD? 
One or two most important programs supported by South Coast DSC. Um, I would say first and foremost would be the services, both um, from birth to age 21, um, that we provide for special education. So um, the specialists and the staff um, at the South Coast ESD work with parents and families all over the South Coast to work directly with students to help them maximize their potential. Um, I think that's key, it's critical, and it will continue, it will continue strongly. Uh, the second is around overall the service plan that um, is negotiated between the South Coast ESD and the school districts. And that provides a range of services, um, intervention services in the schools. We're talking about um, trauma work that's happening in schools, trainings, um, things of that nature. And the ESD negotiates that every year with the local school districts. And that's really to provide um, to the districts some of the supports that each individual district just does not have the ability to fund on its own. So really in a collective model, um, the ESD works with the districts, each uh, 10 of the districts and figures out what are the needs of the district and what supports can the ESD provide in a collective way that will make it so it's affordable for those districts to be able to serve our students in the best way possible. And those two pieces are really critical and upfront in what the South Coast ESD mission um, and is and will continue to be. Thank you. All right, uh, now this is coming for um, Maria uh, at SWAC. And the question is, in your opinion, what does SWAC do well and what would you like to see changed? Okay, I, uh, as I said in my opening remarks, I think that uh, SWAC offers over 70 programs that are very accessible to um, both our youth going from high school into a uh, community college. And also for those of us that are looking for a career change, there are a lot of opportunities and I really don't think people realize how many opportunities there are. I mean, for example, there are um, several uh, associate transfer degrees that uh, allow for um, two year and four year institutions to work together. So students can actually get uh, credit at a four-year university. At the same time, they're completing their undergraduate studies. I think that that's a very strong program. The nursing program is, is incredibly strong. Uh, right now, I know at the Curry campus, they they now have 12 students enrolled and uh, that's up from uh, four to five. So that's growing. Uh, and it's very difficult to get in nursing programs across, uh, across all institutions. So that's very strong. What I'd like to see improved is uh, communication, as I said before, I think that we need to reach out to our community members and get input at what they'd like to see uh, strengthened at the community colleges. And especially around, there's a lot of interest around apprenticeship programs. So working with the state boards on apprenticeship programs, local business entities, and with our campuses to see what we can do in terms of bringing trades forward, I think would be another area it'd be great to see. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Maria. All right, uh, for the port commissioners, uh, the question, and I'll start with you, Brett, is what aspect of working for the district is most important to you? Thank you for that question. What aspect is the most important to me? Uh, I, I think, you know, what are my strengths kind of, you know, what is the most important thing? I don't think there's a singular most important thing. It's um, a mechanism that depends on all of its counterparts to function. Um, I, I don't particularly have a favorite, although I think that my strengths are uh, just a, a, an historical understanding of, of how things work and, and some of the policies that have been uh, have worked and have failed and uh, you know I guess that's sort of a tough question uh, I guess I don't have a favorite <laughs> if that's good enough for you I think that they're all my favorites thank you <laughs> okay uh, Richard the question is what aspect of working for the district is most important 
for you or to you? Thank you for that question. And I think it's a good one because uh, I, working for the district, I believe in a, in a commissioner standpoint is uh, my own personal reason for wanting to uh, be a port commissioner is I want that port to survive. I happen to truly believe it's Port Orford's uh, greatest asset. And I, I truly believe it's underutilized, um, most likely because we're underfunded, um, uh, even though it seems to uh, keep its own uh, going from year to year, there's just no room for, uh, never enough money to expand, to grow or anything else like that. And for me, seeing that port being modernized, uh, seeing that port uh, being able to uh, have more uh, commercial tenants, uh, through the redevelopment project, uh, uh, and, and I guess coinciding with seeing the port survive and, th and thrive is that redevelopment project. And uh, it's imperative that that it goes through, as, as Brett alluded to earlier, they've been working on it for 10 years through uh, what I've gathered and learned over, over my time. Um, there's been successes, there's been failures, and, and we can't afford to have any more failures, and it just needs to absolutely move forward and and that is one of the most if not the most important thing to me to see that redevelopment project be successful thank you thank you richard okay so we're going to go to swak here and uh, the question for you maria is what steps would you take to assure that swak college district funds are being spent as they were originally intended well, uh, I'm privileged to uh, have been appointed to the budget committee um, just recently, and uh, we start training on that in May. And so uh, I will be in a role where I can really learn the ins and outs of the budget and be able to uh, support that we, we remain viable. Uh, again, I would reiterate, we're coming out of a pandemic and that has had an impact on uh, SWAC as, as well as several community colleges. So there's that. I do know that there's funding coming in from, um, from the federal government to help support all uh, colleges. And I also know a lot of that's going to Portland. So <laughs> there's that. But I, I really see, um, I know that I have a lot to learn. I don't have all the answers around the budget. I just know that with my work ethic, I'll get in there and I will learn as much as I can and support uh, and support the viability of the community college. And the other thing is there is a master plan, a 10 year master plan actually, that's working closely with the foundation board and uh, with the community at large. And I think we're all partners together to, uh, to really um, sustain our community college. Thank you. All right, so we're at ESD. And Maria, I'm going to ask a question similar to what I asked Maria earlier, and that is, in your experience, what is the ESD doing well, and what might it do better? Well, that's a great question. I think um, I would probably reiterate um, what I said previously in terms of our top goals. Uh, for the organization, and I think the organization is doing well with those goals. Uh, the first around serving students, especially um, our students with special education needs throughout our district. Um, and, you know, one thing and being part of committees throughout this past year with the ESD, uh, one thing I've really appreciated about both the leadership and the staff is their ability to um, find a way to get feedback from parents and families and really listen to that feedback and then adjust accordingly. Um, and they built in those feedback mechanisms, whether it's parent cafes, whether it's surveys, um, people who want to share with their name attached to it or people who would like to share anonymously. Um, but I think overall, they're doing a great job in providing those special education services that are needed. Um, and I would say the same with the service plan for the district. Um, for multiple years in a row, uh, we've had agreement um, with the continuation and rollover with the service plan that has been negotiated with the districts uh, for years. 
Oftentimes districts will opt in and out of the various things, but there's no large renegotiation going on in terms of the service plan. Uh, the executive director of the organization's done a great job in working with districts to really listen and understand the needs. Um, but I would just say again, those feedback mechanisms that get built in, the trust that's built with the staff and the leadership to be able to hear those suggestions and then be able to, to pivot as needed um, for what we're hearing are the needs on the South Coast. Thank you, Marie. All right, um, we're back to the Port Commission. And the question, and I'll start with you this time, Richard. Uh, the question is, in your view, is Representative DeFazio doing enough on the Transportation Committee to support critical port infrastructure? And what advice would you give him? Send money. <laughs> uh, I, I think uh, Mr. DeVazio is, is, is interested in the port. I think he wants to see uh, the port survive. Uh, he has been a, uh, a proponent in the past and, and I am hoping that it is uh, going to continue. He's gonna be instrumental in making sure that we get some of these uh, redevelopment funds. And, and uh, I know that he has uh, recently been down here and uh, I, I want to see his, uh, his support continue. And I believe that he's on the, on the right track. And uh, uh, I hope that he continues with his uh, promises and uh, continues with the support that uh, he has given us. Thank you. Thank you. Brett, same question for. Uh, oh, okay, the... thank you. Uh, I got it. Uh, you know, DeFazio is great. Uh, I could call Kathy Erickson on the phone right now. I could call Kathy and I would hear back from the Congressman's office tomorrow. DeFazio is always right there. He's Johnny on the spot. Uh, when we had our big storm and our breakwater failure, I took him on my boat and we toured the damage on the boat. Uh, guess what? A year later, after years of, of, of having problems with it, a year later, we've got $5 million and the thing's fixed. Uh, he, Peter lives on a boat in DC. He, he loves boats. He loves marinas. He loves harbors. He, he is incredibly valuable uh, to, to the ports on the South Coast. He has been an incredible friend to the ports. I don't see eye to eye with uh, the Congressman on all of the larger national issues, but the question was, and I support him and, and would vote for him today. Uh, he is a very good friend to the ports. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, we're gonna go back to ES ESD. Um, and the question for you, Marie, is homelessness is a problem for many students everywhere, and especially in Curry County. What programs are in place or being developed or should be developed by the South Coast ESD to help students without homes still receive adequate education? Thanks for bringing that up, Georgia. It's such an important issue that needs attention, and needs funding and needs assistance. Um, we have a lot of students on the South Coast in need. We have students homeless. We have students that need resources and services. And I think the South Coast ESD can be absolutely a place that helps to bring those services to those students. Um, in, I know in Coos County, they've got a program called the ARC Project that's out of Marshfield High School that works with at-risk youth. And um, I know the Curry Homeless Coalition down in Curry County is also doing a lot of work around identifying needs and identifying opportunities for both students and families and our community who are experiencing homelessness. So. Um, I think that this is an opportunity for our ESD staff to continue to listen, to understand those needs of the students that we serve and the communities that we serve and see where there are both resources, opportunities for connections 
and places in which the ESD can play a role in bringing the services that are needed to those students. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, Maria, we're going to um, look at SWAC here. And, and the question for you is, how will your leadership style or experience serve to promote the effectiveness of the board? Thank you. So I have um, 12 years of experience at, uh, at a four-year institution. And I also, as I've said before, am the beneficiary of going through a community college experience myself, as all of my family members have. And uh, so I have passion around this. I have passion around what community colleges can do and how they can bridge for both our youth and for those looking for a different pathway forward. And so I would bring that passion to the board. And I also have worked in several roles where you have to be very collaborative, a team player, a good listener, and solutions oriented. So I would bring all that to, um, to the board and I will bring humility. I would be a new board member. I realize there's a lot to learn as a new board member, just as Brett was speaking of earlier. You know, he's, he's bringing 14 years of experience uh, with him, I think is what you said. And, um, and I recognize that. So I would, I would learn from my fellow colleagues so that I can be the most effective and uh, the most approachable and accessible board member that I can be. Okay. Thank you, Maria. All right, um, back to the Port Commission. And the question is, and I'll start with you, Brett. Do you fish? Uh, yeah, yeah, I fish. Uh, not only do I fish, I fish, fish quite well. <laughs> Anything else or is that, that it? That was the question. Yeah. All right, uh, Richard, same question. Do you fish? <laughs> Uh, yes, I do. Uh, I, I do fish. I am not a commercial fisherman. I'm a recreational fisherman. Uh, uh, one of my greatest passions is taking uh, kids out for the first time fishing and, uh, and having them uh, catch a fish for the first time and show them how to clean it, how to eat it and how to cook it and all that good stuff. So yes, uh, I am uh, a fisherman. That's one of the reasons I moved to Port Orford. And uh, hopefully I will be able to continue to do that as well as uh, hopefully I'll have the opportunity to serve as a, a commissioner. So thank you. Thank you. All right. And uh, I think this is the last question. And I'm going to ask you, Marie, uh, for ESD. How will your leadership style or experience serve to, to promote the mission of uh, South Coast ESD? Thanks so much for that question, Georgia. Um, my leadership style is really uh, listen first and uh, see where there are others with experience, knowledge to be able to bring to the table and produce collaborative solutions that help people. And in my case on the South Coast ESD, help students and our community. Um, I'll continue that at the South Coast ESD it's how I work on other boards that I serve on, um, the Vanden School District. I serve on the um, South Coast Development Council Board. I serve on a number of other boards and committees, um, South Coast Early Learning Hub. I think that one of the things that I both enjoy and am good at is knowing individuals in different circles and being able to pull together connect threads that may not have been connected before and really bring opportunities to the table that would benefit the organization that I'm serving and ultimately the people that that organization serves. Um, I have a passion for this area. Um, you know, so my leadership style being connection and passion, I love the South Coast. This is where we choose to call home. It's where my kids are, it's where my family is. Um, I want not just my family to thrive, but all families to be able to thrive. So I put my both personal and professional time and heart and soul into that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So this completes tonight's Zoom candidate forum. The league thanks you, the candidates for participating. As mentioned earlier, the candidate forum recordings will be available at lwvcurry.org shortly after this. So I, I wanna thank you all again and uh, have a good evening.
Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.